there everybody this is Ashley from Embroidery Island and today I wanted to do a video about using a sticky back stabilizer to hoop some type of items that are a little bit difficult to hoop. Um, this is a specialty type stabilizer that not a lot of people know about that I've noticed um, because every time I'm using it people say oh I've never seen that before. Um, but this particular um, sticky back stabilizer that I'm using is from OESD and it's called Stable Stick and it's a tear away type stabilizer. And I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I just really like this product. Um, but what you do is you go ahead and you hoop some of the stabilizer and you'll notice that there's a shiny side that feels like a sticker back. You want that side up, okay? And you take a straight pen and you make, just score an X through the center of your hoop like that. Now what you can do is peel up that sticker. See there? Now you can see that's very sticky. It's not so sticky to the point that it's going to leave a residue on your project, so you don't have to worry about that. There we go. Now I've got the sticky inside my hoop removed and the paper outside is not removed so it's not gonna be getting stuck on my machine or anything like that. Okay, so what I wanna do today is I have made a new uh, D20 dice design that I've put up in my shop and I wanted to make a cool dice bag for one of my friends or maybe my sister. I haven't decided who I'm gonna give it to yet. I have this awesome um, dark red glitter vinyl that I got from a shop called My Punk Bordery. Um, it's a very popular vinyl shop. Yeah, this is their dark red glitter. And their website is My Punk Bordery, M Y P U N K B R O I D E R Y.com. So since I don't know which uh what kind of bag I'm gonna make yet I just want to get my design stitched up I'm gonna just leave myself a little wiggle room here as far as I'm not gonna cut um a small piece to fit my hoop I'm gonna leave it a little larger here because I'm thinking I might want to do not like a drawstring type typical dice bag I think I'm gonna do like a clamshell um zipper type bag um so let me see here. I'll cut off about that much. Um, that was about 14 inches worth right there. Okay, so with this, as you can see, this vinyl is pretty thick, and I don't want to um, I don't want to put that inside my hoop because you know it might leave a hoop mark or something like that, or be difficult to hoop and then pop out. So what I can do is just center it up and stick it to the inside of that sticky stabilizer and you can see it sticks fairly well. Press down pretty good, that way I don't have any shifting during my sewing process. Okay, and I'm going to move my camera over here to my sewing machine. Oh, sorry if you can hear my kitty outside my door. He hears me talking and wants to come in. Now he's trying to knock on the door. <laughs> That's Banks. Don't tear up the carpet, Banks. <laughs> he tells me no. Hopefully he'll settle down. Anyway, okay. Now I can hoop my material here and I don't know what kind of needle I have on here from my last project I was doing so I'm gonna go ahead and change that um, and I have some here I'm gonna try these uh, organ 
needles, the sharps, the 7511. So let's see how that does on this uh, vinyl here. Dinky, settle down, bud. He desperately wants to come in the sewing room. He's not allowed, though, because he gets into things and tears up and wrecks stuff. All right. Sorry it's taking so long. Bear with me. All right. Get this needle on here. Now, if you didn't know, it's important to change your needle frequently. A lot of times when I, I was teaching, um, I used to do teach embroidery and quilting and general sewing. Um, you wouldn't believe how many times people would be having trouble with their stitches. And, uh, you know, you'd, I'd ask, when's the last time they changed their needle? And they had never changed their needle. They didn't realize. Um, so you need to change your needle um, if you're doing large projects. Between every large project. And you need to change your needle um, between every few small projects. Okay? So if you're having trouble with your stitches and... You know, you don't see why there'd be anything wrong with your machine. Chances are your needle is old or you're using the wrong type of needle for the project. There's a lot of different types of needles. Now, this material here, this vinyl, has like a, um, oh, my machine went to sleep. Has like a, um, somewhat, I don't want to say sticky, but, um, when people use vinyl, they have... The tendency their foot will sometimes get uh, stuck on this because it has like a gripping type effect. If that happens, uh, you can go ahead and put a piece of tissue paper over the top of the project um, just to um, give your foot a little uh, a little slipperiness so it's not getting stuck. Um, I haven't had problems too much with it and so I'm going to see how this goes. So I've got my thread going, let's start. All right, tell it to stop so I can trim that tail. My material's staying in place, and I'm not going to have to worry about um, my uh, my material having a hoop burn or popping out because it's not even in the hoop. It's just floating with this sticky sticky back stabilizer. And my machine's sewing over this my punk embroidery. Uh, vinyl very well. I love the glisten and gleam that it has. It's gonna be so pretty. This is the design I'm stitching up. The 20-sided dice for um, tabletop gaming, Dungeons and Dragons. So um, I'm not going to uh, leave this running for the entire duration of the design. As you can see, it's just going to take 25 minutes for this to stitch out. So, um, I will um, post a picture of the finished design on my Instagram um, and probably my Twitter and Facebook as well so that people can see what the finished result looked like. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that this little quick introduction to the sticky back stabilizer helped. Thanks, bye.